the Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative, and the joint resolution is passed. And for those of y'all, again, who kept saying Hillary the same as Trump, well, that was Trump's Vice President Mike Pence Tuesday, casting the tie-breaking vote to dismantle another Obama-era policy, this time the repeal of one of his consumer protection regulations, a rule that would have allowed consumers to file class action lawsuits against banks and credit card companies. All but two Republicans voted to repeal the rule, and no Democrats or independents supported the move, nullifying the measure that would have taken effect in March. The rule was unveiled in July by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and praised by consumer advocates as giving average people more power to fight industry abuses. The bureau chief of the Protection Bureau, Richard Cordray, says the move allows companies like Wells Fargo and Equifax to remain free to break the law without fear of legal blowback from their customers. Joining us now uh, is uh, Nikitra Bailey, Executive Vice President for the Center for Responsible Lending. Uh, when you look at this measure, uh, by uh, by the United States Senate, uh, it will it will be go to uh, Trump's desk to sign. I mean, it is abundantly clear that they don't want consumers, and we also are talking about veterans, veterans who are being targeted by these same companies to say, oh no no no, y'all can't touch the banks. Uh, you must do individual lawsuits as opposed to what we've seen in the past. Absolutely. The war against consumers continue rolling. Unfortunately, this started with trying to stop the prepay card rule from actually being enforced by the CFPB. Congress then tried it to use the CRA to stop that bill and regulation from being implemented. And the consumers stood up and told Congress no, so they were not able to bring it to the floor for a vote. However, in this instance, Congress was able to actually do that and brought it to the floor for a vote. And unfortunately, in the dark of night, the Vice President of the United States sided with big Wall Street banks. Now explain home. that when you say the dark of night. It really was late at night. It was, it was really late at night, and he came over and he cast that deciding vote in favor of Wall Street hurting hardworking Americans. And it's hilarious when you, when you hear all of these people running around, oh, Trump has my back. This has nothing to do with consumers. This is absolutely a provision that the banks and the credit card companies want it to be rolled back. Rip-off clauses that are hidden in contracts with consumers, consumers often don't even know that they exist. And in fact, when many of the borrowers who I'm sorry, many of the consumers who were going to check to see if they had been harmed by the Equifax breach were going to enter into their social security information to check. They didn't know that at that moment they were actually giving away their ability to have their day in court. Well, and, and, and the thing about, the, first of all, let's be clear, Wall Street and the big banks, they also hate the, the, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, Republicans want to get rid of it. I mean, so they despise it completely. And it's sad because the CFPB is an amazing agency. It has returned billions of dollars to American consumers all over the nation for being harmed by bad financial practices. And it's doing its job. And millions of consumers have spoken up and said that they want a strong CFPB. But this Congress just doesn't agree and want to take it away. Uh, Scott, when you talk about this, this, this inability to be able to file these suits, these class action lawsuits, that's where consumers' power exists because an individual consumer at the end of the day, they can't afford uh, to be able to, uh, to really go after these folks. But when you're able to have uh, two, three, four hundred, five hundred, a thousand folks who will be able to band together, it's a different conversation. With plaintiff's counsel who will take a case on a contingency fee basis. This was as much against the uh, plaintiff's bar as it was against the consumer, if you will. But let's be real clear now. The fact that you can't do a class action where, where the bank is on, on notice and will probably be more compliant because of the threat of that type of lawsuit. Now the individuals, as they were before, this rule was going to come into play uh, can file what we call arbitration proceedings and an arbitration proceeding is informal uh, it will you, you have a lawyer you have one arbitrator or three depending on where you are and the rewards or at least the awards are much less they usually try to split the baby in the middle and it really does uh, do less to empower the consumer but it doesn't drive compliance to the industry because these are like one-off lawsuits or one-off arbitration proceedings and it's not before a judge so that clarification is important go ahead 
one, one, sec, one second. And Angelina. oftentimes these arbiters have a financial relationships with these big banks. So typically it's in their financial interest to side with the banks as opposed to the consumer. Yeah, and because they, and have, binding the arbitration. they have the interest. It's binding arbitration also, which is, which right. is another issue. Good point. I mean, it's not something that can be appealed. If you agree to binding arbitration, whatever the arb arbiter says is what you have to deal with. This really, I mean, this is the result of the predatory capitalism that the election of 45 has reinforced. This is a gift to the banks, it's a gift to the credit card companies, and it's a slap in the face of consumers. And as you said, Roland, they've been trying to get rid of this agency since this agency was set up. But it's the only thing, it's the only thing that consumers have to protect them from these predatory practices. And it came about as a result of the the Dodd fiscal Frank crisis, housing yeah. crash. I mean, <laughs> the exactly. housing when crisis. the housing market tanked, another law they can't stand. Exactly. So Dodd Frank <laughs> actually was provided from Congress in a very quick and strong fashion to stop these types of financial abuses. Shannon, in a perfect world. I could understand the philosophy behind it simply because if you're looking at personal behind what behind the, the, the behind the before you before you chew no 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 I'm asking <laughs> you say behind it behind the change in the law behind or the, the law behind the change okay in a perfect you understand? world wait 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 go ahead as I was saying go ahead in a perfect world you would be looking at personal accountability. So if you're looking at personal accountability, then the individuals collectively are ganging up against the one entity. However, in this world here today, there are so many things that are hidden in contracts, in negotiations, and things that my mother didn't know about a lot of the clauses in financial stuff, so a lot of the things that my husband and I do to teach our kids, we had to learn. We got caught up in some of that predatory lending stuff. So in a perfect world, I understand how it should work, but in this world here today, that doesn't work. The and financial have, services sector has never been in, a perfect in, world in for borrowers of color. Of we have historically been treated differently and, and not provided equal right. treatment in the financial services sector. And we've lost billions of dollars. During the housing crisis, our communities lost $1 trillion of wealth. We, we've yes. never had our fair share. Well, and well, you know, well, I'm, well, stunned. Well, I'm, well, I'm stunned. I'm stunned well, that you well, would well, use the term. One second, one second, one second. But this is not just even just us. What you're talking about people who are in rural America who are white who are being targeted. They they are targeting veterans. They're targeting military families. This is what is so crazy about this. And you have these folks walking around with those stupid little red hats. Keep talking about making America great again, not realizing that you're voting to screw yourself. Yeah, well, but Roland, you know, I'm just stunned that this sister would use the term personal responsibility in connection with these financial institutions, assuming that people actually have, quote, responsibility when you have to bank. I mean, you basically have to bank. We have the unbanked, but if you don't bank, there are all kind of things that happen. So you, what kind of power, what kind of personal well, responsibility do I have against Wells Fargo or um, Bank of okay, America? Okay. That is well, a hold, stunning no, wait, wait, wait. You made a comment. Comment. No, no, you made a comment to us, Shannon, your response. As I said, in a perfect world, you'd be responsible for the negotiations <laughs> and for the things that you do. I, personally, I, I don't find personal accountability humorous. Um, this, um, I am however, humorous. I am saying that this is clearly not a perfect world nor a perfect situation, and I see the value in the consumer having someone, an outside entity, to protect its best interests. Okay, okay. Final, dollars, comment, final comment. Taxpayer dollars actually ensure the profits of our large financial institutions. We deserve fairness in the process, and unfortunately, Congress has decided to side with Wall Street again against hardworking American families. Man, again, all of you folks in little red hats, y'all will listen to Donald Trump talk about Wall Street. Who do you think he's in bed with? We appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us, he wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.